Welcome everyone. Today we'll learn how to write unit tests with mock and edge unit in .NET. So as a prerequisite, we'll download a sample application. So I'll share the GitHub repository link in the description below. So let's clone this initial branch, open a new terminal, open the solution in Visual Studio. So this project is based on a clean architectural style. We have the core layer with the application and domain projects. I removed the infrastructure and API layers to focus only on testing the core layer, the business logic. So open the application and you will see a single functionality, which is the user service. This class has two dependencies. The first one will be the user repository to store a user in the database and a second dependency to send an email to confirm the registration process. So in the register user method, we have a three steps. The first one is to validate the input request. For demo purposes, I just validate the username and we'll return this result class that contains three properties. The first one is to check if the response is successful. The second one is the value of the result. And the third one is to return error messages. So the first step is to validate the username. The second step is to call the database, to call the repository, to create an user. And the last step is to send a confirmation email to complete the registration process. If the email is not sent, this method will return a Boolean value, will return this error message. And finally, it will set its success to true and return the new ID of the user. So we'll test this single functionality. So open the solution explorer and right click, create a new folder called test, add a new project, which will be an edge unit test project. Define the name. I will keep the standard of the clean architecture. Define the project name and select the .NET version. So let's rename this class as register user test. And the first step is to mock the dependencies. So for that, we'll need to install the mock nuget package. So open the package manager console and type install package mock. And we'll add a second package to write simple and expressive assertions with the Fluent Assertions Nugget package. So create a constructor and here we'll set two properties for the dependencies. So create a new user repo property. We'll create a new mock. So add the reference to the mock. I added the Nugget packages in the application layer. So let me move these references into the unit test project. Go back to the test class and we'll mock the interface for the repository. So define the type. We need to add the reference to the application project. This is one way to mock a dependency. The second way is to use a link to mods, which is a declarative way to write link queries. So let's create the second dependency, add a new property, and we'll use the mock of by defining the interface. And then by using a Lambda expression, we can set up one or more properties at once. So in this interface, I created this template ID property, but we can add multiple properties and just set up at once these multiple properties. And to get the mock object, we'll call mock.get. And this is a second way to create a new mock object. So create the two fields in this class. And finally, in the constructor, we'll create a new user service instance. We'll pass the mock objects and define a private field in this class. So we mock the required dependencies to test the register user functionality. Now write the test. The first test shouldn't uh, register a user by validation error will follow the code from this user service will test will cover all the scenarios for this single functionality so the first one is to validate the username so it shouldn't register usable validation error so let's use the triple a pattern to write the unit test so in the array section we'll create a new user which comes from the domain project so at the reference and define an invalid username. Let's define it as empty. So in the add section, we'll get the response from the method by passing the user argument. 
and then in the asset section let's first verify that the response that this is an asynchronous method so add the await keyword and change void for async task and we'll verify that the messages from the response should contain the constant from this user service it should contain this username not provided constant and we'll also verify it by using the dependencies that the create user method and the send confirmation email are never called so for that we'll call the mock object and we'll use the verify function check that the create user with any user as a parameter is never called so we'll call times that never and similarly for the email service dependency from the send confirmation email with any string with any email verify that it's never called so let's uh, run the test it has passed so let's write a second test for this user service we'll throw a database exception when we call this create user from the user repository so it shouldn't register user by database error so in the array section we'll set a valid username and in the array section we'll set up this create user method so call the dependency user repo and the setup function when the create user is called with any user we'll throw an asynchronous exception so create a new exception and we'll call error constants that db timeout error will return this error message so in the add section let's create a new action to hold the reference to the register user method so at the reference this will be okay this will be an asynchronous action so we'll call the user service that register user by passing the user as a parameter and add the await keyword so we have the reference to the action and to verify that this action throw an exception we'll call action that should throw asynchronously an exception of this type and we can verify the message of the exception so we'll call this with message and copy this same error constant so we we'll verify that this method should throw this exception with this message and we'll verify that the create user is called once and the email service that sent confirmation email method is never called so run the test it has passed so let's write a third test and we'll test this send confirmation email and we'll return false so it indicates that the email is not sent is not delivered successfully to the user so go back so we shouldn't register user by confirmation email error so we'll arrange a new user we'll set an invalid email we'll set up the create user but in this case we'll return a valid id so asynchronously we'll return a new width which corresponds to the id of the user and we'll set up the confirmation email so we can use matching arguments in this case i will use a regular expression to verify that the email is valid so when the regular expression matches when the input email will return true so this is just for demo purposes you should validate the input email before sending a confirmation email to the user okay so in the add section we'll get the response on the register user method first of all we'll verify from the user repository that the create user is called once and now from the email service with this particular regular expression as a matching argument it will never called because we send an invalid email but we can add another verification when the parameter is the same email that we're sending to the register user object to the register user method and this case will be called once and here we can use verify no other calls to verify that no other methods from this dependency are being invoked for instance this uh, email service has this send reset password email if we accidentally call this send reset password email it will throw an exception we'll see in a couple of minutes let's run this test it has passed so add another exceptions by using the fluent exceptions nugget package 
So in this case, the response that it says should be false because we're passing an invalid email. And the messages or the error messages should contain the constant that we're using the use uh, in this method. So let me copy this constant and run again. It has passed. So go back to register user. Imagine that for some reason I call the send reset password email. So this test shouldn't pass because with this verified not other calls, we ensure that we're not calling other methods. So it has failed. You will see in the test explorer that this is a failed verification from this send reset password email. So far, so good. So go back to this service and remove this line. We can reset all the setup and return values from a mock dependency. For instance, we can call emote service that reset. And with this verify no other calls, we'll also verify that all these setups are being invoked. For instance, if we just comment throughout this line, this will fail because this send confirmation email setup when we pass the invalid email is not being verified. So test again, it has failed. As you will see, this is an unverified invocation. So for that, we can just simply call the reset uh, function and run this again. It will remove all the setups and default return values. Now it suits it. So you can use this option. And we have another function to verify that all setups are being called, are being invoked. So for that, we call email service that verify all. So run the test again and it should pass. But now we have an error. That's right. Because this setup was not match. Because we expect that this send confirmation email with this regular expression is being invoked. But we're passing an invalid email. So for that, we can just reset all the setups and then verify it all and run the test again. And now the test has passed. So finally, we'll create the final test to register a new set successfully. So it should register the user. So we'll pass a valid username and email. We'll return a new width from the create user method. And from the email service, we'll keep it as the same. So we get the response in the add section. We have said that the create user is called at least one. We can use this option. So with this regular expression, now we have a valid email. So it should be called once. Remove this line. We verify now the calls. We reset and verify all. And in this case, it says should be true because we're passing an valid email. And the result that value shouldn't be empty. We'll return in a width that represents the ID of the new user. So open the test explorer and run all the tests. We have an error. Oh, this is my fault. This is not be empty in this case. Run again and all tests has passed. So in this demo, we've learned how to write unit tests with mock and edge unit in .NET.